Hi, this is Daniela Cambone and welcome back to Stansberry Investors, still on the sidelines of the Stansberry Research Conference here in Las Vegas, joined now uh, by Jamie Rogozinski, founder of Wall Street Bets, author of Wall Street Bets, How Boomers Made the World's Biggest Casino uh, for Millennials, and the man behind the now Wall Street Bets D app. We're going to be talking a wide variety of topics. Welcome to the show, Jamie. Thank you so much for having so, me. So first and foremost, I have to say, you changed and revolutionized uh, Wall Street, basically. You know, how does that how does that feel? You know, I wouldn't say that I changed Wall Street. It's just I took a different approach to it, right? right? You know, a change would be it, it now has different features or different capabilities or sets of rules. These rules and the, the ability to do what it is that we do has always been there. But what I think is different is to create an entire movement is a word that's used. It's more like a, a, a visibility, a different way of approaching the market. These retail participants, these younger meme stock traders, they take an approach which is unique to them, right? They've carved out a niche in which they can do things their way and they can make it work. Right. Well, I was going to say, you know, the Wall Street bets obviously behind the GameStop phenomena, AMC, Reddit. I want to ask you because you had developed Wall Street bets years ago. It's not, you know, people probably think it just appeared uh, during that time, but I mean, this has been a decade in the ma making. So, to see you, you know, I want to just get your thoughts on when that moment that you you were like, "Wow, this is going to be huge. When did you know? You know, there were, there were moments right, right around 2015 or so, where all of a sudden we would have this mainstream press not talk about Wall Street bets by name, but, but reference it or maybe mm -hmm. link to it and, and talking about some obscure idea. That was like the biggest deal in the world. Wow, we, you know, we've made it. They're talking about it. For the, the serious publications talking about Wall Street bets and we're right. just a bunch of clowns. But then as, as years went by, it's, even since its inception, the size of this thing was doubling in size. So the growth, the speed at which it grew, it's always maintained the same trajectory, but it feels real different for when it goes from 5,000 to 10,000 from when it goes from 1 million right. to 2 million. So it's, it, it became gradually apparent as the years went by. But I like how you were saying you know, to me off, off the stage, how there was that moment where you, you, know, you heard Wall Street bets mentioned oh, at a White House that uh, was the press top. secretary. Yeah, yeah. so, that, so <laughs> you know, we're watching during this GameStop uh, saga when yeah. the whole world is talking about it, and I'm sitting there watching <laughs> the, the, the morning press right. secretary, and, and they get a question about Wall Street bets. I'm like, wow, the president was just asked about Wall, Wall Street, Street bets. bets. Like, that's it. That's we've, it. We've You're made done. It. You're done. <laughs> so a lot of people have said, you know, this this you know, movement, right, is really like David versus Goliath or, you know, the, the people taking power back from Wall Street and the institutions. I mean, is that a right label? Do you see it like that as well? Like the people finally have a voice, the people that always felt they were like smaller in the room or not heard? Yeah, I mean, yes and no, right? David Goliath sounds, <clears throat> it sounds sexy and, and I think there's appeal to this. There's a feel good component to it and that's why I think they use it. I definitely think that there is this democratization, this yeah. ability for people at individual retail investors to have a voice and to be able to participate. Absolutely. But I wouldn't go as far as putting it as good, bad, David right. Goliath. It's a nuanced subject. You know, hedge funds control the retirement funds for teachers and firefighters and whatever. And it's a circular thing. When you hurt the fund, you're hurting well, the people. Well, right? well you know, like, when, right, when, when the GameStop phenomena happened, a lot, there was a lot of, you know, pushback on hedge funds saying, you know, it's not okay what they're doing. They're manipulating the markets. How come they're allowed to short or whatever? Do you think that was a fair assessment? Um, I think the conversation was fair. I think the conversation had to be had. My opinion is not that short selling is bad. In fact, one of the things that I just said on stage is that there's a productive use to short selling. Some, all, all participants in the market can abuse their position and that's bad. But there is healthy versions of that same behavior. And so I don't necessarily like to paint things as, as polar opposites where you can pick a side and stick with it because it goes around. Short sellers have it, a productive use when done correctly. GameStop had 130% short float. It's hard to make my argument that that was very productive. So what, you know, and you were saying on stage that GameStop is now, you know, 10 times that evaluation of where it should be. I mean, is, you know, what, what's happening now with that, with that stock? It continues to be really highly valued. It's, it's valued at $15 billion right now right. with no fundamental justification. But there is a fundamental justification in that people 
believe in this company and they're giving this company the resources. Look, GameStop got the best PR campaign, I think, in modern history for a company. Money can't buy I mean, did they that. call you? No, GameStop did not buy okay. me, call me. But, the, but, but I did go into a GameStop <clears throat> shortly <laughs> after and I wanted I, to buy a PlayStation right. because there was a shortage and I was like, I, you know, I know how to do this. I'll get a PlayStation right. for my brother-in-law. And I walk in there, I'm like, you know who I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I didn't it get didn't my work. PlayStation. It didn't work. No, didn't wow, wow. okay. I want to get your thoughts on the Donald Trump SPAC. Yeah. Um, you know, went up, you know, a thousand percent when it first hit. Uh, a lot of interest from amateur investors. What were your thoughts on that? You know, clearly there is a new stock on the on the on the on the, on the menu. I yeah. guess you want to put this right. It's resonating for uh, various different reasons. This is not a short sell, short squeeze situation. This is, I believe, the move is based off of inherent demand for this thing, right? There's a lot of excitement, and I think that's right. The price speaks for itself. Well, I think that there's a nuance now where everyone thinks, oh, it's a short squeeze, right? Like, how do you know? Well, just be, there's a difference between be, being genuine interest and a short squeeze happening. Where's that fine line? Drawn? There, I mean, there's two ways of viewing it, right? You can actually very quickly view whether it's a short squeeze or not by looking at whether or not it's heavily shorted, which is not the case. So that's the technical component. But on the other hand, you can also go see the dialogue. You go into social media and you see how people are talking about this thing and they're just optimistic and they're trying to buy the stock. Okay, the I know you get asked this a lot, but um, what stocks do you think may be targeted next? <laughs> well, I think it's clear that this one is, is, uh, is next and I think it's gonna be a while before they um, move on to the next one. You know, there was a lot of hope that a squeeze would happen with silver. <laughs> yes, uh, it's 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 really hard. So uh, GameStop was not just a lot of people buying, right? That can happen. That might be happening with the spec. But GameStop was a very technical, very sophisticated maneuver. Uh, they tried to do that same thing in silver, and they quickly re realized that there is more to it than just buy, buy, buy. Yeah. So they, they, they were able to, to get some excitement in there, but certainly sputtered at the starting gate. I want to talk about um, crypto because you have said this in, in your blockchain-based trading platform. You said, this is very much a way for me to say crypto and Wall Street are definitely going to merge. Mm -hmm. Is this the future? Absolutely. I, it is painfully obvious to, to anyone that is, has taken the time to actually learn it and understand this. It took me a long time to evaluate and to realize what crypto was because I, I made the mistake of thinking it was just Bitcoin. But it's, it's undeniable how these things are going to be one of the same thing, right? Um, let's talk about Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> okay. You have said or you suggested the platform create a Nancy ETP uh, to capture the attention on stock trading by House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband. Yes. Have you received any feedback? Uh, no, no, I'm, 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 no, no. I'm just, th this is the first that I've said yeah. it, at least on a, on a very public scale. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing it legitimately. So I'm going through the regulators, all the different licensed brokers, like, you know, to actually create a security and, it, you know, in order to actually pull it off, going through the steps. So I haven't received any feedback in that. I haven't told the world other than just a few minutes ago. Uh, but yes, the idea is to capture some of these really impressive returns from, uh, you know, the Pelosi family's uh, portfolio, which has very attractive returns. Do you think there's synergy between um, the momentum we saw with, you know, Wall Street bets and the momentum we see behind cryptocurrencies? A lot of, you know, the new generation has embraced Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever, because they see it as a decentralized system outside of the Fed. And again, something for the people. Do you see synergies there? I do. There's a lot of similar language that's even when Bitcoin started, there was a whole uh, sentiment against the central bank and printing money, the whole nine yards. Uh, but but I definitely, and while I don't think that things will end up that extreme, that people do want to have control. People do want to be able to empower themselves and to be able to have things. I don't necessarily think that separating or making one go away is going to be necessarily productive, but certainly this, the same excitement about the possibilities yeah. is definitely a parallel. I want to talk about Jamie as the investor. What is Jamie like? <laughs> Diversified low commission uh. ETFs in the s and <laughs> I'm not joking, right? So if I'm actually investing, because it's the word that I'm using for that one, I'm doing it correctly. You know, I'm diversifying, buy, hold, leave it in there. You know, it collects its dividends and it just keeps up with inflation. I'm happy with that. I do also take a, a, a speculative side, but I don't call that investing. I'll call that trading or uh, yellowing. Can you or whatever. share any companies you're eyeing right now, looking at? You know, I do because I live in Mexico and it's tricky for me to use U.S. brokers, which I would need to use because I have to move the money back and forth expensive. I stick to doing leveraged trades on the index funds and forex currencies. Uh, so 
So I'll take the S&P or NASDAQ, whatever it is, but I'm extremely bullish, right? And so these are these short-term trades where you'll take, you know, you'll do 10X on a trade. So it's risky, obviously, that's why I'm not calling it investing. Uh, but it's it, but it's very bullish right now. It continues to. Okay, so when you hear talk of a massive correction, I've been hearing a massive correction for, for years. <laughs> but you know, for the decade, I've heard it. But but that question ignores the fact that we just had one, right? Like people forget because we got over it so quickly. But the stocks dropped fifty right. percent last year. That's a correction. Uh, um, I think it's safe to assume you've embraced the cryptocurrencies. Yes. Uh, are are there ones you you favor over others? Right now, I'm focused on the ones that are, I don't know if the word blue chip exists in, in the so, crypto so the world, Bitcoins. but the big ones, Ethereum, you know, the Polygon, the Arweave, you have um, uh, various protocols that are well established, Binance, things, things of that nature. I will occasionally go into some of these smaller, uh, smaller, more speculative ones. Like there's one that's, I believe it's, the symbol's NFTD, I don't remember what it is, but it is a currency developed around an NFT platform that'll be on Binance. So I'm also becoming bullish NFTs. I like that, that combination. I have a handful of other ones. Fascinating. And I mean, look, it's an incredible story. They're making a movie, right? Yes. Based on your life and yeah. this experience. We were joking online. I said, who gets to play you? <laughs> Brad Pitt for some money. Yeah, huh? I, you know, I've, I've, gotten, I've gotten Brad Pitt. I've gotten Paul Rudd. People say that I look like Paul. Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, I, mean, I could see that. I could that see I that, Walt. Well, Awesome. So we'll see, we'll see um, who gets it. I'm going <laughs> to give you the last word. We have, you know, a great audience. A lot of them uh, are those meme investors. Yep. Uh, just some words to them. You know, have fun. You, what you want to do is you want to go into this market with uh, a positive attitude of wanting to learn, yeah. right? It's risky. It's speculative. Warren Buffett even loses money. But if you go in there and you buy some things and you're curious about them, just get your hands dirty in it. And if you lose a little bit of money, you lose a little bit of money. If you make a little bit of money, be yeah. careful. It might, might have been luck or it might have been skill, but that's how, that's the way that you, you start you, your... You have opened investing to a, a whole new group of people who never thought of it before. Yeah. And so whether you know you agree with the movement or not, that in itself uh, you know, is a great thing. Absolutely. So thank you, Jamie. Yeah, thank you very thank much. Thank you so much for joining me. And thank you for watching. We'll have much more for you, so be sure to stay tuned to Stansberry Investor. We're continuing our coverage here from Las Vegas. Much more to come.